so, hi everyone. Uh, I'm delighted to be moderating this seminar, the the, the Siva Vial seminar with uh, Mariam Saidi today. Uh, Mariam and I had various overlaps over, over the years, but I've never got to see this paper being presented, so I'm very excited uh, myself. Um, I guess a few standard rules, unless you're me or Mariam or, or uh, Roland the discussant, uh, try and keep yourself on mute to avoid um, uh, audio feedback. Um, if you have questions, post them in the chat. Um, uh, a few of us are going to be um, moderating that and looking through it and uh, at uh, strategically optimal moments, I shall uh, ask questions on your behalf. Uh, and uh, Mariam will also try and take breaks at, uh, at regular-ish intervals to, to, to allow for questions to be posed by, by me. Um, otherwise, um, Mariam, the floor is yours. So it's raising the bar certification thresholds and market outcomes. Okay, thank you very much and thanks for inviting me. So this is a joint paper with Xiang, who is also here helping me answering questions, uh, and Giancarlo, uh, who I don't know if he's attending or not, and Steve Tedros. Okay, let me start. Okay. Ah, okay. One second, sorry, I have to fix something here. Okay, so sellers, um, uh, often have better information, especially in online market. And they know a lot more about the product than the buyers. Uh, so this is, uh, we have this uh, traditional lemon market that we have, we have seen many papers about. And we know that reputation and feedbacks can be one way to mitigate so this problem. And oh, sorry, another Mary, I hate to interrupt you very early on. Um, have you maximized your screen? We're just testing whether it's frozen or not. Oh. Let me see. Yes, it says that sharing is paused. Resume share. Let's see. Let me uh, share again. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. So that's good. Everything's fine? Okay. So another standard solution here is certification. And there's some uh, um, like methods of certification uh, from uh, even for not online market, uh, for example, you have a uh, better consumer uh, bureau rating and you have uh, restaurants, hygiene grades and investment uh, grades. And uh, uh, so in uh, the papers uh, by Dranovo and Ginger Jean, you have this that from trader to grape, consumers rely on quality disclosure to make important purchases. And uh, the same now is being applied in a lot of online markets. So for example, you have that on eBay, for eBay top rated seller, you have similar ratings for, uh, uh, for um, Airbnb and for, uh, make this upward top rated uh, top or, uh, top rated uh, workers so so are you seeing the next page I want to make sure that yeah okay so buyers uh, can uh, so for example we are going to talk about eBay and buyers can identify uh, sellers who are passing this bar that eBay uh, uh, put. Uh, and even like when they search for the items, they can see if the seller who is selling the item is top rated or not. And after they click on that on the listing page, again, they will see the same kind of information. So the, this paper is going to be talking about uh, this badge. And uh, from the uh, upside, this, uh, having this badge with, um, would mitigate these asymmetric information problems. But the con can be that it can be a barrier to entry. And we are going to be uh, trying to see 
uh, answer different questions. So some of the questions that we're gonna be answering is what happens when we raise the certification bar? And we wanna see what is the incentive for the new sellers to enter depending on their quality and incentive for incumbents to exit the market. And we also wanna see the effects of, on quality of incumbents in the market and quality distribution of the sellers in the market in general. So our approach is uh, to first develop a simple model for this raising the bar, what it means when, what are the implications when you increase the, uh, the badge uh, uh, minimum and we want to study is a policy change on eBay to answer these questions. Okay. Um, so if there is no question, I will start with the model. Sure. Okay. So the model is uh, very simple uh, and is stylized, but it gives good intuition of what we should look at and what are the predictions of a simple model. And we can look at the data having a bit uh, more clear uh, foundations in our mind. So on the supply side, uh, we have continuum of sellers and each of them can produce one unit at zero marginal cost. And here we are assuming that they have to pay an entry cost uh, for entering into the market. And um, this is coming from this distribution G. So uh, we assume that the sellers have uh, possibly three different types. And this is uh, uh, similar to the setup in diamond uh, paper in 1989. So a measure mu or L of the sellers can only produce low quality. So their quality is fixed at low. And a measure mu H of the sellers can only produce high quality and the quality is again fixed at H. And then you have a, a measure of mu S sellers that we call these sellers strategic sellers. So these sellers, uh, they can produce a medium quality good at uh, without putting any kind of effort. So at zero cost, they can produce a medium quality which is between this H and L or they can exert effort and produce higher quality and they can produce a quality H at, level, uh, at a cost level E. And there's uh, heterogeneous in this level of E. So different sellers in this S group can, uh, get, uh, can increase their quality at different costs. So here, uh, the S types have two different dimensions, the E dimension and the A K uh, dimension. So the entry cost and the cost to increase their quality. The other two sellers are only heterogeneous in the entry cost, the K. So on the demand side, the buyers are very simple. So they value the quality of the good and they're willing to pay up to the expected quality of the good. And they're on the long side of the market. So the price would be equal to expected quality. And here we are assuming uh, uh, on the information side that buyers do not observe anything about the seller's quality. Uh, but market uh, regulator observed the seller's quality. And it can produce a credible and observable badge, B. So this badge uh, can be either M or H. So they can uh, either uh, badge sellers who have medium quality and high quality, both at the same time, or only uh, certifying the high quality sellers. I mean, certifying all the sellers means like not having any badge. So we are gonna be talking about moving the certification from the middle uh, quality side to the high side. And we wanna sort of study this uh, movement of the uh, badge. 
So the batch certified is that the quality is above that threshold. And uh, these are some notations that we would need uh, um, when I'm gonna discuss this uh, um, model. So P uh, of a score B is the price for sellers who are above the batch. So the B would be like M or H and P lower score B would be the price for unbiased sellers. And this uh, V uh, upper score B and V lower score B is gonna be denoting the average quality of badge and unbiased sellers. Okay, so let's uh, talk about these different two um, thresholds for badge. If we start with the low bar, so just uh, having both medium quality and high quality sellers badge, it's easy to see that all these strategic types will shirk. No one will put any efforts uh, because there is no benefit from uh, exerting effort. They don't see any um, uh, value uh, from that because they're gonna be badged by, with the high sellers anyways. Uh, so they would, all of them would have quality equal to medium quality. And we will have a, it's easy to show that the equilibrium have this condition. So first the, all the S types will, uh, who enter would choose to shirk and the prices for them is gonna be um, coming from the average. So the average quality and average price of the badge would be the weighted average of these two S type and high types. And uh, the low guys are gonna get the price and value average uh, quality L. And you can find the entry threshold based on the entry cost, uh, not very complicated. So the part that becomes a bit uh, more tricky is when you increase the bar to be at H level. So only making uh, sellers who have quality of high badge. So when this is the case, some of the S types, some of these strategic types will exert effort uh, to become badge. So the intuition is that there's always a batch premium and given that we have assumed that the effort costs are um, between zero and infinity with uh, um, complete support, there's always some people with, that they can increase their quality to age with very little effort and if there is some premium, they're gonna be doing that. So the uh, proposition and equilibrium would tell you, okay, first some of these S types will uh, get bad and they get bad when they exert effort and increase their quality. And the average price for the badge guys is now H. So previously it was between H and um, M because you had the convex combination of the two. And the average price for the unbiased sellers now is between uh, L and M because uh, the same uh, intuition of like, we always have some sellers who uh, would be bad from this strategic time, there would be always some who would not be bad and they're gonna be pulled with the low type and that uh, would increase the average price for unbatched sellers. Okay, so this is uh, just a simple graph. So you get the intuition of um, this uh, uh, model a bit better and also about the predictions uh, that we will carry into the data. So here on the x-axis, we have K, the entry, fixed cost of entry. And on the y-axis, we have E, the effort uh, for the strategic types uh, to, uh, um, to exert effort and become high quality. So this is for just for a strategic type. Uh, so given um, a price in equilibrium, so uh, for the high type, the price is always high because it's only include, uh, for the badge uh, sellers, the price is always H because we are only 
giving badge to high quality sellers. So this difference uh, between H and P lower bar H is the premium of getting badge. So if the effort that you have to exert to become high quality is less than that, you're gonna put that effort and we will become bad. Uh, otherwise, you're not gonna put effort. And also there is, uh, uh, this is the fixed cost of entry. And we can show that, okay, if uh, for example here, your fixed cost of entry is too high, you're not gonna enter. And also for these guys, you're not gonna enter if, because if you enter, you're gonna be shirking and you have this triangle area of the sellers who are gonna enter as well. Okay, so the main uh, purpose of uh, taking you through the model is to get to this comparative statics that we are gonna take uh, into the uh, data. So what is the impact of raising the bar? What is the impact of taking, um, uh, going from uh, this bar that you would uh, uh, certify M and H sellers to only certifying the high uh, H sellers, the very highest quality sellers. So the first uh, corollary is that the price now that uh, bank sellers, uh, sorry, uh, the uh, price that now S types are gonna get without putting efforts is gonna be lower than the price they were getting without putting effort before. And we can show that this uh, results in uh, fewer S-type sellers, so sellers in the middle entering into the market. So uh, from the middle, we will have a shortage of entry. And then um, on the other side, uh, sellers of low type and high type actually now will get higher prices. So the low types are getting a higher price because now they're getting uh, pooled with some of the medium uh, sellers. And the high types are getting higher price because now they're not pooled with the medium, medium quality sellers. So this sort of gives more incentive for the two end of uh, the two tails uh, compared to before to enter the market. And uh, another obvious uh, prediction is that the S types who uh, keep their badge, who become badge again, they produce higher quality because before they would be badge at medium level, now they would be badge only at high level. So if they're getting badge again, that means that they have increased their quality. So it's pretty obvious based on the design of these policies. And uh, this last corollary is a bit uh, longer, but it's uh, um, the main uh, thing that will help us uh, to do the identification in this paper. So here uh, uh, we say, okay, if let's compare market A to market B. So if in market A, you have more of these S type, this middle quality type compared to L and H. So let's keep the L and H the same size, just blown out the uh, number of sellers in the middle. Then raising the bar implies more entry of the two end. Uh, so at the end, it will have even fatter entry tails. So the markets, so the, the main uh, idea here is that when the middle side has a bigger uh, weight, the impact of this uh, change in uh, distribution is even more noticeable uh, in, uh, after it, uh, raising the bar. Okay. Uh, any questions? Should I continue? So um, maybe, maybe just uh, I wanted to raise a, a, a question that was raised by um, Alexia on um, whether certification is uh, continuous or not or binary. And then uh, your co-author Zhang said quite rightly that in this context empirically, of course, certification is 
is binary, you're either certified or you're not. But it raises a, I think, a, a related question that I, that I had in mind, which is that in the background, you have other forms of information on eBay and other platforms like, uh, you know, consumer reviews, product ratings that are continuously evolving at the same time that you see these uh, top seller badges, right? So you're taking the interpretation that certification is providing more information to the market. Yeah, but... so actually uh, another paper that uh, I had actually with Xi'an, we look at this much more closely uh, that, and we try to be clearly, uh, clearly identifying the effect of these badges on eBay. And uh, we argue in that paper that in uh, presence of other factors, you still get uh, a bump uh, for the sellers when they become bad. So in that paper, we do a lot of different diffs controlling for different factors. And we see that sellers, after they become bad, they see a bump. And like we do a lot of different usual things of like people who just missed, people who just got it. Uh, to show that this badge uh, includes some information that other inf uh, other kind of information on eBay doesn't have. Uh, and uh, the main reason, um, I guess, like intuitively, the main reason is, first of all, it includes some data points that is not available publicly. And the second one is that uh, we are not, uh, so I, I think a lot of times we as economists, when we think about other people, we think they shop as we do. And I think most people don't do that the same way. So one thing that, for example, we have uh, done in that uh, paper is to look at, okay, what percentage of people when they open a listing for a seller would actually click on the seller ID, ID to see more information about the seller. So there you have a lot of information that is included in this badge uh, that you can get like this all continuous information there. And less than 0.1% of people actually click on that. Uh, so you it, can still see things like the, the, the number of uh, transactions yeah, so then, that are clicking, right? I, I yeah, so those are time. very uh, bad. Uh, so especially the percentage. <laughs> I, uh, I, I wish I, I deleted that from the slides. So the percentage, for example, positive. Uh, if you see a seller who is 98% uh, positive, that means that that seller is like the in the lowest 10 percentile. So it's like very uh, right, but, but you could just take the number of transactions rather than the number of positive. I mean, if, if, if someone sold 500,000 things on eBay, then they've been around yeah, for a while. Yeah, so. I mean, uh, the... the that... I, I guess, I guess uh, so the follow-up question from Alexia, Alexia and exactly my next question would be, if this is a question of design, like if we're designing certification, why couldn't we just design even finer information way beyond the badging? You know? Yeah, so actually, so that is uh, actually in this paper, we're not going to talk about the design much. Uh, in my uh, in another paper of mine, uh, this paper is with Ugo Hoppenheim. Uh, actually, we are looking at this design uh, question. And one important thing that we find out in that paper is that if uh, you want to maximize the benefit for the consumers, you actually don't need to go to a lot, a very fine uh, grade for getting a lot of benefit. Most benefits that you would get, you actually get from two or three grades. You don't need to have very fine grades. And uh, yeah, so uh, here uh, we, in this model, uh, we are not having like that discussion, like this model is not uh, complex enough to answer the design problem. Uh, but uh, I mean, in that other paper, we can show that actually having very fine grid is not potentially, it's not going to give you a lot of mileage so which can sort of 
talk to why a lot of these marketplaces actually give this um, very coarse grid. So this is uh, a lot of marketplaces have the fine one, but the coarse one actually has a lot, uh, give you a lot more meat than the uh, fine one. And uh, I mean, the eBay is the same. You're right, like maybe if you can uh, sort of have a very good interpretation of all this, like how to combine these signals, you can get a lot of this uh, information that is also included in uh, the badge. But you, you only need, you know, a certain uh, percentage of population who are not going to do that kind of uh, calculations. And uh, just because, for example, it's costly for that. And just for them seeing this signal can be uh, much more beneficial than giving them 10 different scale of things. And just seeing this badge is going to be beneficial. But, but for this purpose of this uh, model, you can just assume that this is the only thing that the consumers are seeing. Uh, but uh, I mean, in reality, it seems that still this has a lot uh, value. And we see that as you uh, like, um, like, we're not going to show uh, like a very, a very rigorous way in this paper why it has value, but you will also see it in the result that uh, if this uh, badge didn't have any impact, we shouldn't, we shouldn't have seen anything here, right? Okay, sure. Uh, mm -hmm. But we see a lot of impact here and there. Okay, should I continue? Is there any? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. Okay, uh, so this is a list of things that we are gonna take um, um, to the uh, data. So quality and uh, prices will increase uh, for both badge and unbadge sellers. So average quality and average pr uh, prices. And the distribution of in-trans sellers quality will have thicker tails. And uh, conversely, the distribution of exiting sellers have a, have thinner tail. So here in the model, we didn't have exit, uh, we didn't model ex uh, exit, but you can think of, okay, if you have the same uh, thing of like a scrapping um, uh, fixed uh, value, like Hoppenheim model, you get the same kind of uh, exiting behavior uh, in the um, opposite way. So uh, some incumbents who retain their badge, they would increase their quality. Uh, and across the market in more impacted market who, which would be a, a model as markets who have lost more badges. Uh, so the sellers who have lost, uh, markets who have lost more badges. So you have more of these strategic types in the middle, there would be larger impact on the tail of quality of distribution of entrance and exit. And what uh, our model doesn't predict is the average change in total entry rate. So here a model uh, would tell you that the entry rate at the two ends will go up and will go down in the middle. So with the summation, we don't know which direction it should go. And also what is the impact on average quality of entrance? Because again, we have more of the two ends and less of the middle. We don't know uh, what would be the average. It really depends on the distribution. And also about the welfare effect on the consumers. So we have to make uh, assumptions on the distribution and consumer heterogeneity that we haven't made in this uh, um, in the model. So we are still going to uh, show you uh, what has happened in the data, but we don't actually have a prediction from the model. Okay, so let me uh, talk a little bit about the data. So we have uh, data from eBay, uh, which we will have access to all transactions. So it will be, it's about information on product attributes, listing features, um, buyer history, uh, sales fee uh, feedback and reputation. And um, we have about 400 subcategories that are exhaustive. So uh, every, so it, and every uh, item that is sold on eBay is in one of these 400 subcategories. So we treat this as a market. So for example, one of them is 
fictions and literature. Another one is Fresh Cut Flowers. We actually sell them on eBay. And uh, we also use product IDs when we wanna uh, talk about how the prices have changed because we would need to control uh, in much finer instance of what, uh, pri uh, what products are. And these product IDs are very refined. So um, for example, we will have iPhone, like a certain iPhone, certain internal memory and like a color and everything would be one product ID and another iPhone with different uh, color or different internal memory would be another product ID. And we also have uh, data on sellers' first listing date, so you know when they enter the market. Okay. So what is the policy change that we talk about? So this is very similar to this raising the bar that we talked about in the model. So they switched from power seller to ETRS badge in September of 2009. And uh, this certification requirements, uh, so they made this certification requirement more stringent. So they had other instances that they changed the uh, requirements, but this one is, uh, was particularly interesting to us because uh, they didn't lax it someplace and make it more stringent in the other place. It was actually the requirement for ETRS was all the requirement for power seller and they added more stringent requirement on top of that. And then they uh, actually, the power seller badge became obsolete. So, uh, obsolete. so they, you didn't have like both of them appearing you only had this eBay top rated seller afterwards. So you wouldn't know if a seller was power seller, but not top rated seller. Okay, and as a result, if you look at the share of sellers who are bad, you have a sharp decline of uh, from 10% of the sellers to only 4% of the sellers. And here you can see there is an optic uh, after why. So here, uh, another thing that I want to note here is that even though this 10% of the sellers, they're doing a big share of items sold on eBay. So it's not like, I'm not talking about like a, a very fine margin of transactions. So it's not a big uh, share of transactions happening on eBay. Okay, so now let me talk about our empirical strategy. So we uh, first want to see, okay, this uh, get uh, this policy exposure. We want to see uh, what, uh, like, look at different uh, dif uh, different uh, categories and see which one of them become. Imp um, impacted with uh, the policy more. So the way that we are gonna do it uh, is by simulation. So we have done it both ways of seeing actually in practice uh, what has happened and also by simulating. So what I mean by simulation is that we look at uh, the sellers who were active in one of these categories and see what percentage of them would lose their badge uh, from among the bad sellers after you add this new uh, requirements. So the um, reason is just to make sure because it will, you will have entry and exit happening right away. So just get uh, the uh, like policy uh, relevant one, not uh, get it mixed with entry and exit. But we have uh, done that uh, uh, that way as well in appendix and it doesn't change much. It's just, I mean, the magnitudes will change, but the direction doesn't change. So the markets with more reduction in share of buy sellers have more affected sellers and hence will be differentially impacted. And here you can see uh, this uh, coefficients of like, what is this share of these sellers who have lost their badge from different uh, groups and you can see that um, uh, it varies a lot from one uh, to the other. So there are 400 of these lines here and here we are just uh, showing the names of some of them, but there are 400 of them. 
Okay, so now uh, going to the second stage, the way that we are modeling it, so we want to see the impact of the policy for different uh, uh, different variables of interest. And the way that we are going to model it, we will have fixed effect for category and time trend, and et cetera. And uh, here we are going to be showing you this gamma parameter. And so we, for example, we want to see the number of intrants. So which, for example, something that we didn't have uh, a prediction. We want to see how the number of intrants have changed. Um, like if you go uh, after the policy change and you want to see like, uh, you want to give a higher coefficient to the categories that have lost more sellers uh, and more sellers have lost their badge to uh, the one that fewer sellers have lost their badge. So I'm going to be showing you this parameter gamma. So the identification here um, uh, lies into assumption that all markets were hit by the same policy change. Why some of them get more impacted because of some uh, exogenously different, different distribution of sellers side. Uh, so this is uh, like a big assumption. We do uh, various uh, uh, checks to uh, like, get get closer like uh, have some kind of uh, uh, like at least we ourselves think okay it's reasonable assumption to make so we have done various tests to make sure that this identification assumption is not crazy it's not it's not easy to prove that assumption but we do our best to uh, make sure that's not crazy assumption so for Sorry, quality, can I, 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 there, was a, there was a question just before sure. you, you go on. on the slide where you showed the um, the effect on the number of badged people uh, previously. Sorry, previously. Uh -huh. this, this one. So there's a there's a question about um, if you look at this, uh, it seems that the the number is somewhat stable before the the shift, and then it it, it it gradually rises after that. Is that because we were in some kind of steady state before and then we're not, or what, what, what kind of? So afterwards, that? what we think is happening is now you have either this entry of high quality sellers entering and getting back, that we sure that is happening, or some of these strategic types now increase their quality and getting back. So previously, yeah, so previously you were sort of in a steady state and afterwards you're sort of increasing the number again. I see. So I see. you're sort of getting to a steady state. The reason that we go, don't go uh, much more further is that uh, eBay, each year they change, uh, they add wow. a lot of policies in September. So it's not very easy. Mm -hmm. to compare things afterwards. Right. I mean, I guess fundamentally there's an issue that your model is static, um, which relatedly I had a question about. So in your model, you don't have a distinction between being an incumbent and having sunk your cost at the point at which the bar is raised and being mm -hmm. an entrant who has to sink a fixed cost. At, yeah. at that point, does that make a difference? I mean, I like... don't think so because I mean, um, you can add uh, no, I mean, the impacts. So, here we are sort of mostly talking about the intran. So, having some people already in the market who have paid uh, the cost would probably make uh, the model more complicated, but the results on the intran shouldn't change much. All right, I guess just to, to the slide that you were just on uh, where, where you had gotten to um yeah yeah you're you're interested no 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 yeah interested in uh separately the quality distribution of entrance and incumbents mm -hmm. right so it's yes how, how you, uh, right i mean how do you treat them differently when in, in your model no entry and exit are the same thing and i i mean i haven't thought through this yeah so here i guess um the main thing um yeah, so the model is not exhaustive and we're not identifying the model. So it's more of, you know, a benchmark for us to think about this. And uh, I think so here, so for quality distribution of intrants, um, 
So it's mostly about the entrance, but uh, you can think of uh, like in uh, the spirit of model, you can think of the incumbents. And if you're, for example, a strategic seller who is incumbent, it, are you going to exert effort or not? So that part would not be that different. So the part of the entry is not going to be relevant for you, but the, uh, you're going to be exerting effort if uh, the premium is uh, less than, uh, it, the premium is more than your effort card. So those things would not be that different. Mm -hmm. So with the spirit of the model, you can um, have predictions uh, for these different things. Um, sure. Yeah, so, and um, okay, so we don't have, I have only five minutes. So, let me, so this uh, for quality, what we are looking is number of positive feedbacks uh, over the number of transactions. So let me just show you some results in the last five minutes. And um, hopefully we can do the discussion in the 15 minutes remaining after that. So what we see on uh, the impact on the rate and quality of entrance, this is the average. Uh, is that we see actually an increase in both uh, the number of entrants and also the quality of entrants. So one thing is that for the entrants, uh, qual the quality of entrants is not persistent, but uh, uh, sorry, uh, the number of entrants is not persistent, but the quality of entrants is a per persistent thing. And the sellers um, who are entering are of higher quality on average. So one thing, let, let me spend a bit of time here. Uh, so the, we have a bit of predictions about the distribution of entrance quality. So we said that the sellers from the two ends are gonna enter more and the sellers from the middle are gonna enter less. So if you have like two different distribution of the sellers, uh, the way that we uh, uh, are going to be testing that is we're going to go and look at, for example, the average quality of the highest 10 percentile of sellers who are entering. So let's look at, for example, uh, the top decile of the sellers and look at their average quality. So when you have a, a, um, a distribution with a figure tail, this tends to be on the right. So the average quality of these sellers in the top decile is on the uh, right of this. And on the other hand, when you're looking at the first decile is the opposite and the average quality for uh, the sellers in the thicker tail is actually lower than the other one. So we wanna sort of see this uh, in the data to see if the distribution of interns become of a thicker tail after uh, you change this policy. And we do that uh, both uh, within category and across category. So this is within subcategory, this is across subcategory. So this is over time and this is uh, like just looking at the differences of the categories. And what we see is actually like at the two ends, uh, you have a positive, uh, um, a positive coefficient. So the categories that were impacted more are actually having, uh, have a thicker tail on the uh, top. On the uh, first SI, so the lowest qualities, we have a negative coefficient, but it's not significant. Uh, so on the low, low side, we see some impact, but it's not really significant. Um, and uh, the opposite thing that we talk about, about exit, we also see that, that on the top SI, you see less exits uh, um, in both of these sides, um, but I mean, this side is uh, significant, the other one is not. Um, so uh, you see less exit from uh, the categories that were more impacted from the high quality sellers. So this is uh, for the incumbent, it's not for, um, for uh, interest. Okay, so uh, let's also talk about a little bit of impact 
on the incumbents. So uh, what we see here is that we don't see that much impact in terms of the average quality of the incumbents when we are looking at everyone. So we don't see that they increase in their quality much. So one thing that you might say, okay, these sellers are more established, so maybe they got to their quality, so they're not that affected, but for interns, you see more um, actions happening because they're new sellers, I see this new incentive, so maybe they're changing their uh, quality, but even if you're looking at the sellers who just enter, so just like three times, three months before the policy or six months before the policy, you still don't see a lot of impact for these guys afterwards. And uh, I mean, here, these are some uh, like mm, the pretty obvious predictions that when uh, we uh, now look at the sellers, uh, like the, try to find this S type. So the sellers who were in the market uh, were badged and now they're not badged anymore. We see some significance uh, happening. So for these guys, they're the ones that are changing their quality. And if we are actually uh, get a bit uh, zoom in into them and look at the sellers who lost their badge, but they regain it after three months, we see a lot of impact happening on them and not so much from the others. So which is, I mean, not surprising at all. The part that is surprising for me is that sellers who, for example, had badge before and after hadn't changed their behavior at all. Like previously, probably they were so much further about, uh, from the threshold. Uh, now they're closer to the threshold, but they're not doing a lot to increase their quality. I guess uh, possibly time to start wrapping up. Okay. Uh, so I'm not going to talk about the prices. Um, so just uh, one thing to mention here, we do some uh, back of envelope welfare analysis and we get that uh, we, we um, have an estimate that 3.4% increase in average uh, value for the buyers. And uh, which is, uh, so it shows that this increase actually helped the buyers. And we do some lasso to see what, in what uh, group and like categories, it was actually the biggest impact. And we see that this is more important in the categories that uh, they have more number of claims for the consumers. So the categories that, uh, actually having this better information was more important. They see higher, uh, in, like an increase in uh, value for the consumer. So uh, I guess, yeah, I think my time is up and uh, I will just stop here and we can do the discussion after. Okay, uh, so before I, I um, um, in the meantime, I guess you guys can thank you so much, by the way, Mario. Um, uh, there was just one question whilst you're switching slides, if um, uh, Roland, you have um, uh, slides for your discussion. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, Alexia asked another question about um, estimating the profits for the intermediary. I guess this gets into the, to the, to the question of what's the business model of eBay and uh, how are they extracting surplus from all of this in the first place? Yeah, so uh, I mean, these are uh, very important questions. Like if you consider uh, the optimal design, uh, what are uh, what eBay is gonna uh, is actually optimizing? Because we don't know exactly the answer to that. Or I mean, the same is true for other markets. And uh, as I said, uh, this paper is not the uh, design paper. So in this two other papers that I'm showing here, uh, advertising myself, uh, uh, is uh, we are looking at this uh, question. And uh, actually what we find is the optimal, uh, uh, the optimal, for example, even if you're looking at the thresholds would really depend on if you're maximizing consumer surplus, if you're maximizing producer surplus, or if you're maximizing total surplus. And we see actually um, a bit of divide between the consumer and producer surplus. 
so what eBay or other marketplaces are maximizing can be a combination of these two. Or you can actually think about this about like a certification um, literature where they say, okay, you have a certifier who wants to get a fee from the consumers. And actually it turns out uh, that that would be identical to maximizing consumer surplus. Uh, sorry, uh, maximizing, uh, yeah, either consumer surplus or maximizing the lowest quality seller's uh, profit uh, because then you can sort of get the whole um, payoff from the sellers. Um, and uh, yeah, so the answers would be different depending on what you're maximizing. Um, and sure. I okay. try to answer them in these other papers. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. So in the interest of time, I think we might want to switch to the, uh, to the discussion now. Uh, sure. Oh, okay, so thank you, Marion, for this very nice presentation. So you explain things very well and there's little sense for me to repeat things. So I want to jump straight in with my remarks and questions. Let me share this up, sure. So I did not pre uh, uh, pre prepare any slides because changing this in an online session makes uh, is often problematic. So in the sake of time, let me just uh, straight jump in. Yeah. So I think this is a very nice paper. Yeah. So it's a very clever combination of theory and empirics. So of course I like that the paper em emphasizes the role of certification in general. I do think. That certification plays a big role in markets and more research on this both in theory and empirics will be helpful. So what I liked here was also the idea that eBay is not only a platform, yeah, but it also provides a certification service, reduces the amount of asymmetric information in the market. Yeah, and this has an effect on the offered quality distribution in the market. Yeah. So what was already partially pointed out by Nikhil uh, is you focus here on the eBay badge. But I think the more general question is what information to provide at all. Yeah. Now related to this, and also Nikhil also said something like this, is uh, I have a question of how you, you view certification in eBay. Yeah. So the certification on the old badge is basically only an aggregator of available information. Yeah. So all the information that goes in to the badge is already there. Now, when I read the paper, I thought the new badge actually does a little bit more. Yeah, so there's also now unobservable information on the disputes being aggregated in this, in this new badge. Yeah, so you don't say much about this in the paper. So one question I wanted to ask is, do you think this is important, this extra bit of information or, or not at all? Yeah, so that was uh, one, of, one, one of my questions. So, um, yeah, so I just continue, then you can just answer afterwards. Um, so I like the combination of, of, of adverse selection and moral hazard. Moral hazard. So it's very stylized minimistic. Yeah? Uh, there are only three types, and there's only three possible quality levels. That's, of course, the minimum you need if you want to talk about uh, raising the bar, having two quality levels for certification. But in your empirics, you focus very much on tilts. So, and if you have only three levels, there are two thirds of them are tilts. So uh, I, I was a little bit struggling with this. So maybe you could say something about that too. Yeah. So I also think you do a very good job in ensuring that the theory model captures the empirical setting here. Um, but yeah, let me push you a little bit on this, uh, on this too. So you, you explain in the paper that there are di direct benefits from getting the badge for the seller. So there's a lower fee. Yeah, this is not in the model at all. Yeah, so, uh, and then uh, it's also not borne out in the empirics. So it seems to be a, a big driver for sellers. So uh, let, a little bit more explanation here would be helpful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then my understanding of your power sellers is that um, they don't hold an auction, you, even though eBay has a lot of auction, they, they mostly sell via a fixed price, right? And whereas in your model, you have this, idea that the buyers buy at their, uh, at their expected willingness to pay of the expected quality, which reflects very nicely the auction, but it's actually not the part of eBay where the auction is, yeah? And then you, yeah, there might be signaling effects by the price setting of these power sellers, yeah? And uh, so there's also not much in, in the paper about the possibility that signaling is going on from the asymmetric information, yeah? 
Um, then there was the question, but Nikhil also asked that one already. So he preempted me in a lot of things. Yeah. So why there's only one badge? Yeah. Um, you can have yeah more than only one a different kind of quality badges. Yeah. Uh, and then the last point, um, yeah, I only have, uh, I want to leave you some time for answering. Um, yeah, you, you do a little bit of welfare analysis, but you don't say anything about eBay. Yeah, so what is the best about for eBay? Yeah, eBay is a commercial business. Uh, it gets these fees. Yeah, uh, uh, is eBay really interested in, in, in the welfare or in the, yeah, uh, what would be profit maximizing for eBay, uh, the, the two kind of badges, yeah. And then the last thing, which is, um, yeah, uh, I have to mention this. So what, are there any manipulation incentives of eBay to, to present the information of the patch a little bit differently? Um, yeah, we trust eBay as consumers a lot, but maybe uh, one has to be also a little bit careful about that. Yeah, um, so yeah, that was a little bit my comments uh, when reading the papers, but I really liked it. And I really liked this combination of, of, of theory and empirics. So uh, yes. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, I made a note, so hopefully I'm uh, not going to miss uh, uh, like your comments. Uh, so about the other signals, some, something that actually I didn't uh, answer, I think, Nikhil very well, uh, was that uh, in um, our uh, one thing else that we do in the papers uh, um, uh, with the uh, Xiong is that we actually redo everything by controlling everything that buyers uh, see other than the signal as well. So we control for anything possible that is uh, out there and we see the same kind of impact. Um, so all the things about the entry, the mm, tails, everything is still there. The magnitudes are obviously different given that we are controlling for a lot more stuff. Uh, but uh, so it sort of shows that uh, this uh, badge has an impact, uh, has some value. So regarding to um, your comments that this badge compared to the power seller now has information that were hidden before. I mean, it's still hidden. So for example, the number of times uh, there is a claim against a seller is not uh, a public uh, signal or they use like a certain things on the distribution before. So it can be uh, one of the reason that is more informative than before can be this. We actually don't uh, talk a lot more about why it's uh, like, like other than, okay, it's much more restrictive. It also includes this information that wasn't there. But it's interesting that even power seller had an impact. Uh, so even though all the information was available publicly, even power seller had an impact and it can be just, you know, having a simple signal has its value that from the consumer point of view, they don't have to analyze all this information to get a sense of the sellers. Yeah, but, but if I jump, may jump in there. But the problem is a little bit, you, you, you're selling this change of the badge as only raising the bar. But mm -hmm. if it becomes more informative, the signal, because more information is there, there's another effect. So, and whether that confounds a little, I mean, you concentrate wouldn't on- it, So wouldn't it be still like raising the bar? It's like previously you have, I mean, one uh, like a very extreme case is that your uh, bar was in, uninformative before completely. Now it has information. It's like raising the bar, right? It's uh, so that, I mean, it, it has um, increased. Yeah, I mean, but I think qualitatively and uh, economically, there's a different effect. Just saying yeah, yeah, you get this higher badge only because you provide more quality or yeah there's extra information in this batch i think that there's a qualitative economic difference between the two but um that was yeah just, i don't know we have just... to think about it a bit more but at least uh, from like thinking on my feet i think it's uh, i mean it's like how more how much more information this one has to the other it has more information so uh, that's the main thing that we are trying to play with, that this one has more information. 
and it's uh, more string. Uh, so they like yes, if they have made it differently, maybe we would get different result. Um, and I mean, one thing that we don't want to, at least in this paper, say. So the main uh, idea here is okay. Probably when they have changed this uh, policy, they weren't thinking much about the impact as, on entry. And most of actually um, my papers and most other papers on um, reputation and like certification and think, and think mostly about the incumbents. I guess the most, uh, the very like a biggest uh, message of the paper that we might haven't done a very good justice in uh, emphasizing is that when you're changing these policies, you have to also think about entrance. And when you make this badge harder to get, you would sort of impact the entrance much more than the incumbents in the market. Um, and this can be like very important in for the policymakers when they're thinking about changing the policy because they might only think about the market they are at that moment. But this is this might be actually much more important in terms of changing their quality. So one thing, uh, like what we see is that actually the impact on the incumbents is very little. It's only the people who have lost their badge and then they try to regain it has some, we can we see some impact there, but not really any other place. So the, the incumbents will get higher prices or lower prices, uh, but they're not changing their quality. So that's sort of important uh, addition. Um, like an uh, important message from this paper that we wanted to um, uh, sort of highlight. Uh, so and just before you continue, if, uh, you will be absolutely free to do so in a second. I just want to, in case anyone needs to uh, uh, to push off since it's, it's 5.01, uh, please feel free to do so. We're going to keep chatting because we're all very interested to do so. So anyone who wants to stay can obviously stay and, and be part of the discussion. Also, if there's anyone in the audience who wants to ask Marion a direct question rather than through my poor filtering, please feel free to do that. I, we can make sure that you can uh, uh, be unmuted and, and ask your question directly. So just, just put the request in the chat. Um, but okay, sorry, Marion, I interrupted. 